Hello and welcome to this mini lesson uh, from inside the PU portal. Today we are going to be looking at goals and smart target setting. We're going to start off within goals. Now, first of all, we need to learn what a goal is, which is an intended place to be in in the future. So it's an intended outcome or an intended event. So it's where person is now at position A or point A or quality A and they intend to be at position B, be it an actual result, be it a quality of performance, be it in a new team, be it with a certain time or a distance, it doesn't matter. They are currently at point A and they intend to be at point B. That is a goal. It is something that they are aiming towards. They are directing their behavior and intentions and energy towards realizing this second thing, this intended event. So that's what a goal is. Now these can come into two different forms. We've got our outcome goals, or we have our performance goals. Now a nice way to think of the difference between these is quantity and quality. So outcomes can typically be quantified. I'll put quantify there. So that you can attach a number or a distance or a height or a measurement. There is some form of unit that can be used to tell you how good or bad something is. And quite often, an outcome is in comparison to others. So by giving yourself a number, a distance, a height, whatever it is, you can then compare that to the same unit of measure achieved by someone else. And by doing that, you can rate the quality of your outcome. So by quantifying your efforts and by comparing them to others, what you've actually done is set yourself an outcome-based goal. So the intended event that you wanted to bring about was the outcome of an improved 100 meter sprint time. And let's say you've improved it by half a second, now you are faster than 10% more of your, of your competitors. So you can use number, you, you can use data to quantify the progress that you've made. Performance, on the other hand, is more to do with the quality. Now this one is a little bit more difficult to actually assess progress against because it's more to do with the feel or the fluidity, the economy of movement, the efficiency. A lot of the time we're dealing with the skill itself. So I'm, just, I'm going to put down here ACE face, whereby the acronym that we can use to talk about or describe the quality of a skill the accuracy, the consistency, the efficiency, the fluency, the control, the economy, the accuracy. So we can start to actually use these sorts of descriptors, language descriptors, to talk about how, be how much better the performance has gotten. Now here, we're not actually comparing to other people. This is a self-comparison. Now outcome goals can also be self-comparison, but by saying how your skill action felt, you've got no way of knowing if it feels better than another person, than a competitor. So it's entirely intrinsic. It's self-directed. The performance of other people doesn't have a sway on the improvements of your performance goals. Now, typically, the performance goals are, pre are preferable, I should say, or preferred for both novice and elite performers, and you'll usually find that the elite performers set more performance goals than they do outcome goals, even though typically it's the elite who are actually winning the trophies and beating personal bests and setting world records, which are outcome-based goals. So, within the goals section of this little mini lesson, we know what a goal is, where someone is, where someone wants to be. We then know the two different forms that these can take. Outcome-based goals where they quantify something and they then compare themselves to other people, or they can set performance goals where it's to do with the quality of the actions. 
It's how the actions feel. It's the fluency. It's the, it's the level of their skill. And it's a little bit more self-directed. Compare themselves to how they were doing it before to how they're doing it now. On the other side, we are now looking at smart targets. Smart targets. Whereby we have specific We have measurable or measured. We have accepted. We have relevant or realistic. Let's put relevant, realistic. And we have time bound or timely. So, this is almost the second phase of goal setting. So whether or not you use an outcome-based goal or a performance-based goal, you should try and put it into the SMART target structure. Specific, is it clear? Is it related to a particular skill, a particular outcome, a particular measurement? You don't want it getting lost or it being ambiguous so that when the eventual event happens, you're not sure. So you need to be clear, what will it look like? Can it be measured in some way? Now this lends itself to an outcome-based goal with a unit of measure, but if you're doing a performance goal, are you keeping a journal? Are you filming? Are you able to, in one, one day, one week, one month, one year, look back at some old footage and compare it to some new footage and look at the differences? So will you be able to measure the success? Accept it. Do the people involved agree with what's about to be undertaken. Do they think, and this sort of goes into the second one here as well, do they think or do they accept that it's going to be a reality that they can get from point A to point B? Or is it too much of a leap? Is it unrealistic? So the people involved, the trainers, the coaches, the performers themselves, are they on board? Do they agree? Do they accept that this skill, this this new development is going to move them in the, in the right direction. And are they ready for it? Is it a realistic expectation to be setting this goal at this point in their career? This could also be, this A, achievable. So you'll notice here that we can use these A's and R's a little bit interchangeably. So is it achievable? Is it relevant? Is it accepted? Is it realistic? So, moving on to the last one, timely. Is there a time limit set? What's going to be happening weekly towards the goal? What's going to be happening monthly or yearly towards the goal? Does it make up part of the micro, meso or macro cycles when linked to seasonal or periodization? Are they going to be checking in on the progress every single training session or is it something that can happen at the end of a season? If it's an outcome-based goal, and it's just by the end of the season I want to take one second off my 200 meter run, then at the end of the season they can look at their final race and their first race and they can see. They don't need to check in on it every single week. They might choose to because that might keep it fresh in the mind, might help with motivation. So goals, two avenues, outcome or performance. Smart target setting. Whatever you choose to do, have you included these Factors. Is it specific to your sport? Is it measurable? Is it accepted by you and your coach or your trainers? Is it achievable for you to actually do? Or is it realistic for you to actually do? Is it relevant? Do you need to be doing this? Is it actually going to push you forward? Or are you trying to develop a component of fitness which has no bearing in your activity of choice? And then timely. When do you expect all of this, all of the goals, to be achieved. When do you plan on this intended event, point B, when do you intend that to actually come into reality? And that is that. Two different types of goals and the SMART target protocol. Hope you found that useful and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Bye for now.